Let's have a look at a problem. Write the net ionic equation and predict the spontaneity of an acidified aqueous solution containing potassium permanganate and a piece of iron metal. The first step is to list the reactants and where necessary dissociate all soluble ionic compounds and ionize the top six acids. The hydrogen ion in water because it's an acidified solution. I write an hydrogen ion instead of hydronium ion because the table of half reactions in your data book indicate acids with a hydrogen ion. The potassium permanganate is soluble in water and so is dissociated into potassium ions and permanganate ions. The piece of iron metal is just listed as iron solid. Using your data book, identify the strongest oxidizing agent and the strongest reducing agent. The permanganate ion in combination with the hydrogen ion is one of the strongest of all oxidizing agents. And while the iron metal is not the strongest of all reducing agents, it is the strongest reducing agent from this list. So what about the other species in this list? The potassium ion is an oxidizing agent, albeit a very weak one. So is the hydrogen ion, and so is water. Water is also a reducing agent. But we only concern ourselves with the strongest reducing agent and the strongest oxidizing agent. Because remember in this course, that is the only reaction we consider. The next thing we do is write out the reduction half reaction of the strongest oxidizing agent. Write it completely as shown from your data book, reading it from left to right. The number of electrons gained and the coefficients to balance the equation has been done for you. Next, to show the equation losing the electrons gained by this equation, we write the oxidation and half reaction of the strongest reducing agent. Again, we write it exactly as it appears in your data book, only this time, reading it from right to left. This way it's clear that iron is losing electrons. However, as it appears now, the oxidation equation is losing only two electrons, while the reduction equation gains five. To correct this inequity, we multiply one or both of the half reactions by factors that will result in the same number of electrons being lost as there are being gained. Multiplying each component of the reduction equation by 2 and the oxidation equation by 5 will result in the exchange of 10 electrons between the two reactions. The complete ionic equation. To make it a net ionic equation, we remove some of the redundancies, that is, components of the complete reaction appearing on both sides of the equation. In this case, it's just the 10 electrons. The completed ionic equation. And because the reactants appear so that the strongest oxidizing agent is positioned above the strongest reducing agent in your data book, the reaction is then spontaneous. And you would write spontaneous just above this net ionic equation. In chemistry 20, acids and base titrations were performed to determine the concentration of a measured volume of acid by adding a base of known concentration. The end products are indicated by the addition of a few drops of color indicator, itself a weak conjugate acid-base solution. In redox titrations, finding the unknown concentration of a reducing agent or an oxidizing agent is useful in a variety of practical situations, such as finding the ion content of drinking water, which has stained the fountain in this picture from your textbook, or the vitamin C content in foods and nutritional supplements. Acidified permanganate and dichromate ion solutions are frequently used in redox titrations because not only they're very strong oxidizing agents, they also produce a color change at their endpoints without the addition of an indicator. The example shown here from your text shows a burette filled with potassium permanganate solution. The Erlenmeyer flask contains an acidified solution of oxalate ions. 
The moment when all the oxalate ions have been reacted, we see a color change from colorless to light pink, indicating this endpoint.